Hello everyone, this is Chris Jamel at Exiton Interactive, and in this video, and I think the next video, I think it'll take about two videos for it, we are going to deal with the info side of our authenticators, so the side dealing with all of our validators. We have them running, but we need to deal with the animations for them. So if we look at the example here, what I mean is that if a user focuses a particular text box, then the information for that box is displayed. If focus is removed, it will go back to, if they remove it from the authenticator completely, it'll go back to the default. And if you go from one authenticator to another, it will display that authenticator's validation requirements. That's what we're going to uh, deal with in these two videos here. And so let's get started. I'm going to go back to Visual Studio, bring up the notes, and get started. So we're going to need to interact with the DOM, so animate DOM elements. So as usual, we're going to need to apply IDs to the elements that we're going to animate. So let me go back to the template file, so the authenticator.component.pug file. And what we're needing to animate is the info. So these uh, div with uh, class of info. So what I want to do is to modify the mix in. And to do that, I'm going to say that I also want the key to be passed into it. And then we'll come down here to the containing div, put our parentheses on here. And we're, like I said, we're going to bind to the attribute.id, our usual double backticks. And we're going to interpolate on the provided key. And then I want to say, at the, in addition to the key, I want it to be info ID. So that's going to look for, we'll pass in a key. So for example, if it's the control email, so it'll be control email info ID. So we'll look for a property on our component that has the name control email info ID. So now that we've modified the mix in, we have to return down to the places where we call it. And we'll add some additional keys to this. So on the, on the welcome one, uh, I'm going to add in default, uh, two double quotes. And of course, the rest of these is going to be whatever key it is. So username will have the control username key. Password will be control password key. Control, or control password confirm key, control email key, and control, oops, don't need that one, control email confirm key. All right, so we are passing those keys in and we are binding that key to the ID. So let's go to the authenticator.component.ts file and we have to create those um, IDs. Let's go down with everything else. Group here. Let's put them under here. So we'll need a public get control email info ID. So we'll return the string for that. And I think I called that info email. So that will be the pattern that we take for the rest of them. And let me just copy these in sort of typing them. So we have the, for the email confirm one, password, password confirm, remember me, although it doesn't, we won't necessarily need it because uh, we won't have a info page for the remember me checkbox. And then we have the username. While we're at it though, we also need to have the, an ID for the default. So let's come down here, public get default info ID. And we're going to call that uh, info-default. I'm going to save that. We'll return to our browser here. And it looks like it's just uh, refreshed. And we'll look in the info container, info pages. And we'll see here that we have the IDs being applied to all of our info pages there. First step is done. Let's go back to Visual Studio here. So we need to go to the 
control group .ts file and we're going to want to tell our control group what the info ID is. To do that of course we're going to modify our con uh, interface for the control group config. And we'll say info ID. We we'll use the question mark so we're going to make it an optional. Of course like I said we have the remember me which does not have an info page so we use the optional info ID. Next we'll turn down here we'll put a private read-only info ID to string initially equal to null and let me just copy this while we're at it. What I want is to have a private and info DOM so the DOM for the info element so HTML element equals null and we'll do the same thing here so we are going to have our typical getter here so private get what I call it info DOM one twist on this thing though is that if and we have type of this dot info ID that's equal to and we wrote undefined yeah we'll make it undefined oops it's not helping me so if it's equal to undefined come on then what we'll do here let me just copy it in is we'll throw an error saying that we're trying to access the DOM for this element which is undefined so I'm going to expect to not ever ask to have the info DOM for the remember me checkbox after that we'll do the same thing that we usually do so if the provider if the info DOM is already not equal to null then just return it if on the other hand it is equal to null then we use the DOM reader find child by ID method pass in the native element and the info ID and then return it of course now we need to set the info ID and the constructor so this info ID is equal to config info ID format this a little bit to make it prettier to look at and I do want to make one more thing here just to test it right so we'll just put in a console log statement so if info ID exists then console log the info DOM let me save that belt turn to the browser check the console window and did I save it pretty sure I did yes and why do we not want to update Do the faithful refresh. Oh, there we go. Still. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm an idiot. It's a, it's a long day. So, of course, nothing's going to show up because we haven't done enough yet. So, if we go to the control pair collection, what we need to do is when we create a pair, we also, in addition to the ID, we want to be able to pass in the info ID. Again, optional. String. And we come down here and in our configurations, we'll say info ID, left dot info ID, perfect. Same deal for the right. Info ID, right dot info ID. We're getting there. So now that we've done the collection, the control pair collection, we go back to the authenticator dot component and we need to modify the ng after view init to add in info IDs so info ID is this control email info ID next info ID this control email confirm info ID info ID this dot control password info ID this control password confirm info ID skip the remember me 
last one, info ID, this dot control username info ID. Now we'll save it, go back to the browser. And as I was hoping to see, we have the DOM elements for each of our info pages. So we'll go back to the to back to Visual Studio. Next thing that we're going to do is again return to the control group. So we're going to create a couple methods so when we want to show and when we want to hide the info. So I'm going to do that in cleverly named methods, one called hide info. The other one, public show info. And the way, of course, that we're going to do this is through animations. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to say return and this dot info dom dot animate. And we've seen the animate method before. It takes two objects, the first being the keyframes, the effect, and then the second being the timing. So for testing purposes, what we're going to do for the moment is modify the color. And we want the hiding. So when we show, we're going to change it to yellow. We're going to change it back from yellow to what it currently is, which is D, E, D, E, D. All right. And now we have to set the uh, timing. So we have the duration. We make the duration 350 milliseconds. Easing. It's going to be ease in, out, and finally fill will be oops, forwards. Perfect. We'll do the same basic animation for the show, except that we're going to take the color that it is at the moment and then make that to be yellow. All right, so we've added those to the control group. Now, as usual, we're going to have to go up the chain here. And first, we're going to go to the control pair. So the thing is, is that we have one case already where we have to know whether it's the left or right control that we're talking about, which is in the focus method. We're going to have to know whether it's left and right within the show info and hide info as well. So what I'm going to do here to make our life easier is to create a helper method. So we'll private find, which takes in an ID, which is a string. And it's going to basically do this switch here. Uh, <laughs> what's going on? Type everything correctly and it'll work. Let's reformat this thing a little bit. And what I'm going to want to do, it's well, all out of whack, and I hate when it does that. So what we'll do is format that all, perfect. So what I'm going to do is just return. Instead of focusing the left, we'll just say return this. Same thing for the uh, right. We'll say return and get rid of the focus get rid of the return statement there and come on let's go up on one line we'll never look at it again all right and inside the focus now all we have to do is say this dot find and pass in the id and then say focus so we'll do the same thing public hide info we'll get the id this dot find ID dot hide info. Of course, a mistake that I keep making here. In the end, we'll want to return this. So the hide info is returning us the animation. We're going to use that later on. And we'll have public show info. And we'll say return. Oh, come on. This dot find ID dot show info. We're getting there. So now we're going to go up to the control pair collection and we're going to make a couple of obviously similar methods here. And let's go down here. We'll say public 
show info equals ID string. So this dot pairs. Which one? The ID. What are you going to do with that? Uh, show the info. Pass in the ID. Same deal. Hide info. Again, this dot pairs ID. Hide info ID. And I'm sure there's plenty of people saying out there, hey, he's forgetting to return it. I was correcting myself here. We also want to return the animation from here. All right, so now we have that. What we need is to call these methods. And let's go back to the template file. If you remember in our little explanation at the start here, what we're going to do in order to know to show the info is to respond to the focus event. So let's go back and like I said, go to the template. And we're going to want to include the focus event or, or binding to the, of the focus event on our input in the form control group mixin. We'll just make a, another comma here, come down here with our parentheses and focus equals couple back ticks on focus input. And we're going to pass in the key as usual as a string. Perfect. Let's go ahead and save that. We'll go back, oh, make sure it yep, built. Go back to our component.ts file. And so I was thinking about it at the time when we previously did it. For the control groups and such, we have saved those using the IDs for the controls. And I'm going to have a key passed in. I th this may be the only time that we have to do it, but just in case we have to do it in the future and we have to figure out some way of doing it, we're going to map between a key and the group ID. And of course, I've previously been using and, you know, time immemorial for JavaScript, you basically would use a object for as a map. But we do have this map actual object within JavaScript. So let's go ahead and use that. And what we'll do is come up here to our private read-only fields. We'll say private read-only. We're going to call this one key to group ID map. And we're going to new it here so we don't have to put in the what type it is. So it's a new map. And it's a string to string map. Perfect. And now we'll go down to the constructor. We'll just put it at the bottom here. So we'll say this and key to group ID map. And we'll say this dot control email key. And so the control email key gets mapped to this dot control email group ID. And of course we need to do this for all of them. So let me just copy them in here. Make it look a little prettier. So again, the email key gets mapped to the email group ID, email confirm key, email confirm group ID, password, so on and so forth for all of them. And now we'll go down to the on blur input method that we already have. Below the check username if statement, we'll say this dot underscore control pair collection dot hide info. So if the user removes focus from the input, we want to hide this, the info for it. And which info? We say this underscore key to map group, or group ID map. And we'll pass in the key. So that will give us the group ID to pass in to the hide info. So we've done it on blur input. And I was going to say we need to go to the on focus input, but we haven't made that one yet. So we'll come down here. We'll say public on focus input. That's going to take in the key, which is a string. For now, of course, we'll make it a little more complicated in a bit, but for now we'll just say this underscore control pair collection dot show info and this dot underscore key of key. Now save that and return to our browser. 
go to the right thing. And actually, while I'm thinking about it, let's go in and remove, where's that in, control group, yeah. So now we know that it's working, we're just gonna remove the console statement from our control group. Save that, go back, it's updated. So nothing has changed here, let me shrink this. We'll focus the username, it turns yellow. Remove the focus, it goes away. Password. So it works, that part's working. Of course, without an input focused, we should have the welcome or the default one showing, but we haven't done anything with that yet, so no, no worries there. But we do at least have some basic functionality working. Return to the, return to Visual Studio. All right, so we're going to need to, I said we're gonna to need to be able to animate the welcome or the default info. So we could approach it one of two ways. So we could create or abstract our control group idea more to allow for a control group somehow that does not have an input and those kind of thing, not, you know, no, no view on the right hand side or the left hand side just has the info which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me I don't think that's the way I want to do it so what we're going to do is just uh, instead of if we go to the control group when we do the hiding and showing we have hard-coded in these animations and uh, the parameters to the animation what we're going to do is we're going to pass that in to the control group so that in the authenticator.component.ts file, we will have, we can animate the welcome or the default info and use the same animations. So let's pass these things in to our uh, control group class. So of course to do that, we want to again modify the I control group config interface to say what we want to have passed in. And in this case, let's go here. And we want a, we'll call it hide info effect. And it's an animation keyframe. And we also need an info timing. That's an animation effect timing. And we need a show info effect. Oops, it's not gonna help me name the stuff. Show info effect, which is also an animation keyframe. So we're gonna have those passed in. So of course we need to create private fields here to hold it. So let's come down here and make the private read only. And the first one hide info effect. Again, animation keyframe equals no to start with. And we need private read only info timing animation effect timing again, private read only, and the last one here, show info effect, animation keyframe, keyframe. So we have the fields, now we have to set them, so we go to our constructor as usual, and we come down here and go, thank you for ruining my formatting Visual Studio. And underscore hide info effect, and that equals config dot hide info effect. This dot underscore info timing, that's equal to config dot info timing. There we go, and underscore show info effect config dot who show I would thank you to leave my formatting alone we'll save those and go back to the control pair collection of course it's going to have a fit what we're going to need so the those three properties that we just added the show the hide and the timing those are all common to all controls so instead of adding that into the I create pair config, what we're going to do is pass it in to the constructor for our pair collection. So we need to create those down here. Let me just copy. So we have the hide info effect, the info timing, and the show info effect. 
And we need to do the same thing again. We need to add these in uh, fields. So let's see. We have the hide info effect. By the time I copy them, probably could have typed it. The timing and the show. Perfect. And the usual. Put them in the constructor here, or set them in the constructor. All right, and now we come down here and we go, hey, it's getting a little ridiculous that I keep typing in a whole bunch of different, we have to type in the same thing, effectively the same thing in two different spots. And of course we know that is a no-no. So what we're gonna do is create us a little helper method here. So const and create config it's going to take in an i create pair config spit something out for us it's going to spit basically this thing out and oh, it helps if i do that right <laughs> we need to return an object this thing except that instead of left it'll be c c c Put our using statement here, or our as cast. And of course we need to add in the things that we're missing here. And we need, where is it at? Hide info effect, and that's gonna be this dot hide info effect. And we also need, what else do we need? The show, this dot show. And the last one, in completely the wrong order, can't do it, hurts my feelings. So info timing, and that's going to be this dot info timing, a little comma, get rid of that one, empty space. So now we have the ability to create them. What we'll do is we'll come down to the left here, we'll get rid of all of this nonsense and just say create config and pass in the left. Perfect, and we need to come down here. That one's fine, we come down and change the right. So that's just create config, pass in the right. We're getting closer now. So let's go to, actually, you know what? Uh, long day. Let us, what we need to do is to, this is in the control group.ts file here. So we added all that information into it. I just didn't use it in the hide info and show info. So this in the hide info, the first one now becomes this dot hide info effect. Last one becomes this dot info timing. This one, this dot underscore show. And let's get rid of that. This dot info timing. Beautiful. Now we'll go to the authenticator.component.ts file and we need to, you know, create those variables. I could have just copied them, but we have a place to copy them from here. So what we're going to have is the hide info effect. So if I know the alphabet here, so the hide info effect, again, we're going from yellow to the color that it normally is. We need a show info effect. Show info effect, and we need a timing. We called it info timing. So I guess you go right there. So it's all just the same information that we had previously. Of course, we have our little errors down here. So we need to, when we construct our control pair collection, we need to add in the hide info effect, the info timing, and the show info effect. So let me save that. Go back to the browser. Wait for it to fix itself, apparently. Hey, okay. All right. So it did fix itself. And of course, if we focus the username input, it does change the color, password, confirm password, email, confirm email. So again, we're doing exactly the same thing, except now we have access to the 
animation parameters within the authenticator.component.ts file so that we can animate the default info from this point and not have to create a you know sort of fake control group just for it. I think though that that will do it for this video and of course in the next video we will finish up making it behave the way we want where the again the default is shown automatically and then if you hover we get this nice trans or if you focus you get a nice transition to the next one same deal remove it and uh, I'll make it a little faster than that one but I think that like I said that'll do it for this video of course I want to again thank you for taking the time to uh, watch the video as usual if you have any comments questions suggestions please leave them in the comments section below otherwise I will talk to you in the next video